Hi, my name is Peter Bras. I'm a developer advocate for Autodesk Platform Services. And in this video, I want to give you a quick introduction into the APS extension for Visual Studio Code. In case you're not familiar with Visual Studio Code, it is a very popular, lightweight, and cross-platform code editor developed by Microsoft. Uh, it is open source, and it is built using web technologies. You can find more information, download links and resources at code.visualstudio.com. In my case, I already have VS Code installed, so I'm just going to open it. Now, in VS Code, I would ask you to head over to the extensions button in the activity bar on the left and search for Autodesk Platform Services. You should see an extension with the same name. This extension has been developed by our team, by the team of developer advocates, and it gives you access to some of the services and content within Autodesk Platform Services directly from Visual Studio Code. You can find more details about the capabilities and settings in the documentation here. However, for now, let's just go ahead and install the extension. Okay. Our extension has now been installed. We can see new icon has appeared in our activity bar. Now, if we try and activate this extension for the first time, we will be prompted for APS application credentials. This is because in order for the extension to be able to communicate with our platform, it needs a way to authenticate itself. And it can do so with clan ID and clan secret credentials that you can generate for your own applications on the APS developer portal. Let's try that now. I'm going to hit the Enter APS Credentials button. Now we'll head over to our developer portal. That is the aps.autodesk.com website. Here under my profile, I can go to Applications, and I can either create or choose one of my existing applications. In my case, I already have an app created for our demo. So I'm going to select it. And here um, I can find my client credentials, the client ID and client secret, and use them for our extension. Let me copy the clan ID, head back to Visual Studio Code, and paste the clan ID in the prompt. Next, we're being asked for APS clan secrets. Again, I can go back to the developer portal, copy the clan secrets, and paste it in the prompt. Now, you should never share your clan secrets, um, but in this case, I need to do that for, for the recording of the video. But what I'm going to do is, as soon as the recording is done, I'm going to head back to the developer portal, and I'm going to use this regenerate button to have the portal create a new client secret for my application. Okay, next I choose the region where I want my data to be managed. I'm going to pick US. And finally, I'm being asked to enter a name for my environment. And this is helpful because later you can actually configure multiple of these environments, and giving them short, simple names will make it easy for you to identify these credentials and switch between them. But here, let me just name my environment basic. Okay, our extension has now been configured. Uh, now you can always change the settings later by heading over to your Visual Studio Code settings and search for the keyword forge. Now, reason for this is the extension was created when our platform was called Autodesk Forge, and we didn't want to break any existing customers or break backwards compatibility. And so we decided to keep the original naming of all the options and settings. Um, and that's why if you want to filter your settings for our extension, just look for Forge. Now, the one um, option here I want to bring your attention to is Autodesk Forge environments. This settings can be edited directly inside your Visual Studio Code's settings JSON file. And this is where you can manage additional environments or client ID, client secret credentials. You can see we already have one environment that's been created by the initial um, pop-up. Or we can try, we can, let's say, copy this environment and change one of the properties. Now, the good thing is inside the settings JSON file, you actually get some IntelliSense from VS Code. So now I can hit control space bar and I'm presented with all the different properties available for this object. Um, so I can choose region. And now I'm also presented with the list of available values 
for this, uh, in this case, an enum. Um, so I can say that maybe I want my second environment to use the same client ID and client secret, but to work with the EMEA region. Let me also specify that somehow in the title so that I know what the difference is between these two environments. Okay. Now with that, we have our two environments configured and we can actually toggle between them by going down here in the status bar and clicking this APS ENV option. Here you can see we're presented with the list of environments. And this is where we can easily switch between them. Okay, now let's look at the UI. Currently, the APS extension consists of four views, buckets and derivatives, hubs and derivatives, webhooks, design automation. Let's take a look at some of these, some of the basic ones. The buckets and derivatives view gives you access to some of the OSS and model derivative functionality inside Autodesk platform services. Here is where you can manage your buckets, manage your objects inside buckets. Here's where you can um, ask for you know, model derivative processing, ask for results of the processing, and where you can even preview designs. Let me show you an example. Let's use this plus button uh, to create a new bucket. Uh, now, keep in mind, uh, bucket names in APS must be globally unique. So let's try and come up with a bucket name that nobody else has created before. I can try something like VS Code Demo Tests Bucket. I can choose Data Retention Policy. I'm going to say Persistent. Okay. Our bucket has been created. And now uh, there is a, a lot of actions you can take on the individual elements inside these views. And these actions are accessible through right-click context menu. So if I right-click this bucket, you can see I already have a couple of options here. I can get the details of this bucket from the OSS service. I can delete the bucket or I can upload new objects, for example. Let's try that now. I'm gonna upload an AutoCAD drawing from my, from my laptop. I can choose the name to use for this design inside OSS. I'm gonna keep the original. And now you see our file has been uploaded and I have a couple of other options, actions to take right from here. I'm gonna skip these and explain them in a moment. Now, if we expand our bucket, we can see that our drawing is already available there. Uh, once again, we can right click on the OSS object and we see additional options. We can delete the object, we can download it, rename it, view its details, uh, similar type of um, functionality as the, the bucket level. Now, you may have noticed that there is, we can actually expand this design file as well, and we get a message saying no derivatives yet. This means that uh, we can eventually see different derivatives extracted by the model derivative service for this particular design. But before we can see these, we need to start the actual model derivative processing for this file. We can do that by right-clicking the object and choosing either translate object or translate object custom. The first option will start default model derivative extraction process with the default settings. The second option will present you with a UI where you can actually customize some of the options for the extraction. For now, let's just use the standard translation. And if we refresh our view, you can see that the translation is now in progress. And now we can see that our model derivative service extracted one derivative from our drawing called 2D view. Once again, we can right click the derivative and try a couple of actions. One option is, for example, view derivative properties. This under the hood will send a request to the model derivative service to get the properties of all design elements in this drawing and return them as a JSON. And this is our result. The nice part, as we mentioned earlier, since Visual Studio Code itself is built using web technologies is you can actually right click the derivative and you can say preview. And this will open our own APS viewer right inside the code editor. So you can actually, you can even inspect the outputs generated by the model derivative service, whether it's 2D drawings or 3D views right from within Visual Studio Code with all the standard built-in functionality. Okay, that is it for the buckets and derivatives view. Next one, we will skip the hubs and derivatives and webhooks um, and jump to design automation. 
As you may already know, Design Automation Service lets you host and run your custom AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, or 3ds Max plugins in the cloud. Um, and you can use this view to manage your app bundles and activities using a simple UI here. Um, now, this APS application I configured here is brand new, so there are no custom app bundles or no custom activities, but you can actually use this interface to um, access the shared bundles and activities as well. You can see here we have access to several shared app bundles already and similar with shared activities. Now, let's, let's say we want to try one of these. Um, let's try the AutoCAD Plotopedia um, action uh, activity. Again, we can right click and check, let's say the details of this design automation activity. We see that it is based on AutoCAD version 25, um, that it expects one input, which is the drawing we want to plot to PDF, and it provides one output, which is the actual PDF. Now we can actually run this design automation activity from within VS Code as well. You can right click the activity and say, create work item. Here we're presented with a different view where we're actually supposed to provide some URLs for the activity to get the inputs from and some URLs for the activity to upload the results to. In this case, again, we wanna provide a URL for the activity to get the input drawing file from. Now we can do that by right-clicking our drawing in the buckets and derivatives view and say, generate signed URL. Here we can choose whether the temporary signed URL should be read only, write only, or read write. In this case, we only need reading, so I'm gonna pick the first option. This is our temporary signed URL. We can copy it to a clipboard and paste in the value column of our um, work item. For the results, one thing we can also do is we can right click the bucket and say, create empty object. We call it something like result.pdf. This will create an object inside our bucket with no information and it's zero size. We can actually right click and say, view object details to see that there is no content in this file. Yeah, this is a placeholder. But even though it's empty, we can still right click this PDF file and say, generate signed URL. And in this case, we want a write enabled URL. We generate it. Again, copy our signed URL to clipboard and paste it here. Now, one little gotcha, uh, some a problem that I myself run into every now and then, the signed URLs generated by OSS actually expect the put request instead of post request. So what you want to do here is switch the verb from post to put. Okay, and with that, let's try and run our work item. It's now being processed. There we go. So our work item succeeded. We can even check the JSON report from the design automation service. Looks like everything went well. We can also double check by checking the file size of our result PDF in OSS. All right, we see that this file has now roughly 18 kilobytes. So it looks like this should now contain the PDF output. Let's take a look. You can right click result PDF and say download object. And as soon as the file is downloaded, we can open it. There we go. So this is the result of the design automation activity that is plotting our AutoCAD drawing into a PDF file all executed from within Visual Studio Code. Now, hubs and derivatives are out of scope for this video. These are more useful in situations where your APS application is actually integrated with Autodesk Construction Cloud. In that case, you could actually use the hubs and derivatives view to browse through your ACC hubs, projects, folders, document, and versions, and preview these uh, in a similar way as you can preview objects in OSS. And webhooks are also useful for managing APS webhooks. For example, configuring a webhook to call certain URL when a file is added to ACC. We will take a look at that in another video. And now one final note uh, for the extension inside VS Code. Uh, some of the operations, some of the 
actions of the extension are also accessible through something called the command palette. Here, if you type something like um, upload object or generate access token, um, you will find certain commands exposed by our extension that you can call from the command palette as well. Okay, uh, now if you if you like the extension, if you have some ideas about how it could be improved or if you find any issues, I would definitely encourage you to head over to github.com slash petrobras slash VS code dash forge dash tools. This is where we uh, maintain the source code of the extension. Um, this is where you can find more details about how it's been implemented. And this is, as I said, this is where you can submit new issues or feature requests. With that, uh, thank you for your attention.